Well, hello. Uh, that's me again. It's um, May uh, 12, 2022, and this is sort of uh, on the run of the cuff um, um, recording today, because uh, obviously people send me uh, all the time all kinds of messages and uh, um, emails, and what have you. And guys, I want first. I want to greatly appreciate your help and support from my wonderful patrons and believe me i am aware of you i know who you are and i'm doing my darnest so to speak to communicate with you as much as i can because but do not forget guys keep in mind i am merely one person who has this funny uh, uh, you know, software on his computer, and uh, this is as much as I can do alone. I don't have any team of people who uh, support me. I just have this, uh, my two monitors, my computer, this funny uh, video software, and I'm trying to do my best to stay on the top of things. So if you do not receive anything timely, any response from me, please know it's not that I'm ignoring you. I just don't have time sometimes, or even energy. So, uh, thank you very much, and thank you for your uh, understanding. And now that we are uh, uh, basically done with this introduction, and my, again, profound gratitude to my uh, supporters and pa patrons, so let's get uh, to the, basically, our subject matter, uh, the main reason why I actually uh, started recording this uh, today. So, as was expected, and you can look it up, and uh, you can see it on any map, and there are many maps, you know, and you probably know even more than me, any, uh, all kinds of resources you can refer to to look at the uh, operational state, so to speak, uh, in Donbass today. But it is clear that this cauldron of which everybody were worrying uh, uh, about, me included, uh, and I wrote about it all, all the time, it was kind of evident for anybody with IQ above room temperature with the... Uh, you know, in Fahrenheit, obviously. Uh, you have this uh, uh, Severodonetsk Lysychansk uh, uh, cauldron. By different estimates, there are like between 10 to 15,000 people there. Let's get, you know, middle of the road sort of uh, number, about 12,000 we'll assume there. And uh, it's beginning to heat up big time. And I'm talking about it tremendously. So, and uh, if you look attentively again, uh, what is happening there, Russian troops, uh, mostly LNR troops, but obviously with the Russian support, air support, you know, C4, ISR, what have you, and artillery, obviously, and aviation, uh, you will see yourself that is basically surrounded, especially with Papasna now, uh, which was taken uh, a few days ago, uh, having the full fire control and uh, having the control of, in the radius of 35 kilometers from its uh, dominating heights there, which are about 100 meters high. So the fate of this grouping is, done, is obviously uh, decided already. So they will be annihilated. If not uh, uh, in the humanitarian way, when of course Russian forces will tell them, you know, here's the humanitarian corridor, go out and surrender will take you to those uh, containment areas which are now multiple and in Russian television actually and Russian channels show now what they are there are many many POWs so if not well there will be basically you know physical annihilation of those forces and even uh, the news today uh, that even uh, Vasu general staff uh, delivered to Zelensky the news he probably was trying to avoid to hear and uh, basically that situation is pretty much over and uh, that the, uh, the grouping in Donbass is pretty much done and obviously after this uh, absolutely magnific uh, magnificent idiocy and cretinism of Pentagon and UK planners who planned this uh, Zmeini Serpent Island operation quote unquote which saw a PR disaster which doesn't want to go away for Mr. Zelensky and those people who planned uh, uh, planned it for him uh, we still had today a couple of Bayraktars shot down uh, over there and you know it's just uh, I don't know uh, people from uh, United States and UK who advise quote unquote uh, Zelensky and Vesu if one removes uh, their definitely very advanced and very good uh, American uh, intelligence and surveillance and recon assets, 
from space base to air base to satellites, which are obviously hanging right now out there, you know, and provide whatever they can provide from, you know, uh, real-time picture to uh, VSU and try to sabotage, you know, Russian war. But if you remove that uh, uh, thing, well, uh, I would say that I do not uh, uh, regard highly the planning and execution combined arms operation capabilities of either Pentagon, let alone uh, British capabilities in this respect because I mean guys uh, you're not getting better really when you are losing even counterinsurgency war in Afghanistan and run away from it and uh, so you know you just that's the real war this is the first time they encountered anything like this and don't forget they also are being uh, actually uh, under the uh, um, impact of let's say Russian uh, electronic warfare systems and if you have the radio uh, radar based uh, surveillance in space so yeah you know, pretty much could be assured that there is a lot of countermeasures being applied there so it's not like they have the perfect picture they provide Intel all the time but again as I said once you remove that from consideration um, these guys never fought a real war, I mean, I mean, unless, of course, you're talking about blowing the uh, Pashtu weddings in Afghanistan as a serious military experience, but, uh, well, it is what it is, so let's face it. And that is why they never operated under the uh, uh, situation when they have their, you know, uh, standoff weapons flying into your uh, positions pretty, pretty much every hour and every day. 24-7, 365 if you wish. So that's the situation. But of course now that, that this um, cauldron is pretty much closed, there is a full fire closure of it, um, and it will be reduced in the nearest days or whatever, whatever Russians will decide to do with it, you know, however fast. There are already news that those advisors, obviously lacking any imagination and experience in fighting the real war, they suggest now for Odessa, which also like the old uh, Crimean town of Kerch, has its catacombs, which were used uh, in uh, World War II. They want to turn those catacombs into Azov style 2.0. Well, what do you expect from those people? I mean, really, I mean, do they even learn history? Do they even learn military science? Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, they certainly can, uh, you know, pack a number of the Nazis and whatever VSU will go into those catacombs, but they will be sealed. And that's it. I mean, so well, it's even actually much more difficult to operate out of catacombs, which are easily controlled and sealed, than it is even in Azov style, which is a heterogeneous, it's like really diverse uh, combination of the buildings and uh, underground communications. Catacombs easy. You know pretty much most of their uh, exits by now, they will be sealed off and the guys will just die there from uh, thirst and hunger as it is happening now with the remnants of whatever the hell is left there in Azov Stalin, and they will go to, they all gonna die or surrender. Nobody cares anymore. So, and yeah, there is a situation with the pronounced trend. It's very well manifested. It's very well registered. It is the fact, and that also relates to what uh, Vesu General Staff delivered to Mr. Zelensky. It's the fact that uh, yeah, the personnel issue is catastrophic with Vesu. And now when they uh, begin to send to the uh, front line those territorial defense and uh, last wave of mobilization uh, personnel, it's a, of a very low quality. I mean, I cannot emphasize enough. And they throw them in this grinder and many of them, and as uh, many people already from Elden Air uh, tell us, they just go in the night uh, to the front lines somewhere in Donetsk and Lugansk area and try to get each night 8 to 10, sometimes 20 kids, you know, those people who want to surrender. They don't want to fight. Their morale is zero. So, and they try to get them, you know. And of course, yeah, then they they think that they will be killed by Russians, tortured, or what have you. Well, then they get into those containment centers, which Russian TVs and TV channels, obviously not easy to get on YouTube, but you can easily see it, and for example, in Zizda, uh, in the Zizda informational um, broadcasts, uh, they show those uh, containment centers. There are many of them because they house thousands upon thousands of the POWs, and if it is a Russian containment center, not LDNR, but namely Russian, 
then they are lucky because uh, although they still uh, treated humanely in the uh, LDNR facilities, but Russian facilities, my gosh, for people who didn't take the shower for two months and uh, didn't eat normal food and uh, many of them emaciated and think that they will be tortured, they get into those very nice, warm, heated uh, tents specifically designed territories with the uh, active security systems and of course the patrols and everything. They have their real decent food, they have medical care, they have the showers uh, each week. So for them it's, uh, believe me, it's a cultural shock. Many of them on the TV now and sincerely say that we thought we, were, we will be killed and here we are and it's much better than they ever experienced pretty much throughout all their service life in the Sioux. And that's kind of uh, the thing which uh, I wanted to touch upon today, and especially uh, this uh, funny, uh, well, f funny for Russians, not funny for the situation with the Serpent Island. And what can I say for those people who they say uh, from the UK, the MI6 and those UK defense ministry plan this bullshit. I mean, guys, go and learn military science. Uh, it's not like killing uh, Skripal's cat, you know, and spreading the goddamn rumors or spreading the Navichok quote unquote. This is a completely different level, and yeah, you are out of your depths on this thing. Yeah. So that was my uh, kind of main, uh, uh, so to speak, message about the situation with the uh, uh, operational state. And now people say, oh, what do you think about the Finland? Listen, uh, you can go and read and. Uh, um, uh, try to find Scott Ritter's excellent, excellent review of the situations of Finland getting to NATO. And that's uh, how to say it. Uh, they want to do it? Fine. The problem, obviously, that uh, what many in the West still do not understand, they are de facto at war with Russia. They are at war with Russian people, not just Russia per se as a state. The, the Russophobia is just through the roof. They hate Russian gods. They hate my gods. I'm subhuman for them. For Finns, I'm subhuman most likely. So, and uh, if they want to, you know, get on this war, sure, let them enter NATO. Later, guess what? Uh, yeah, they will have their uh, old energy supplies shut down because, you know, doesn't matter, you know, what they want to do if they are as Russophobic as Finns are and their propaganda is, I mean, it's a kindergarten level propaganda, but then again, I didn't see very many smart people coming from the Europe in the, in, uh, in the last uh, decade at least. So there you go. It will be shut down and Finland will be completely on its own. Russia will eventually, inevitably, will uh, uh, put, uh, put required resources in developing their uh, and uh, uh, building up the appropriate uh, militarized border with Finland and all necessary resources, including mil technical military ones of, uh, like recent, we already know there is a uh, uh, ground-based or land-based version of Zircon 3M22 hypersonic missile. So everything will be there and so, hey, you want, they want to get what, to NATO troops? Well, we'll see what happens. And again, I defer you to Scott Ritter and to Larry Johnson and to many other uh, people, including obviously wonderful article by Colonel Douglas McGregor in the um, American Conservative yesterday, which explains to you basically what is going on. So it's up to Finland. Uh, but what I want to say is, of course, Europe and Finland, if it gets intonated, uh, they have to get ready to leave uh, really to be really poor. They will be very poor. They, it's already happening and nobody really uh, c can deny this anymore. America is getting poor. But Europe is, is, will be poor because it's already on its way. And the question is not like those anecdotal evidence from BBC or, uh, you know, Sky News or what have you who say, oh my gosh, people cannot afford things, uh, you know, food in, in the United Kingdom, for example. Yeah, I empathize with simple Britons or simple Germans. I do empathize, but that's their choice. They chose it. They chose those governments and they will be much more poor. And I wrote about it also in my blog. So you, if you want to, you can go and take a look at it. So technically and militarily, Russia has all necessary resources to address the uh, Finland's uh, entrance into NATO. But uh, we have to understand the long game here. And I need to probably make a fairly long video about the long game. 
what is involved into this West against Russia war. And West has no chance of winning this war for a number of reasons, which I already basically uh, described here and there, and I write books about it, so read the disintegration, the last latest book of mine, which pretty much explains what happens. And uh, that's what I wanted to kind of touch upon today. So now, especially after you read uh, a Colonel Douglas McGregor article, I will give the hyperlink to it below in my video. Wonderful article in the American Conservative. There are some really bad hurt issues for uh, people from Ukraine, and especially those uh, Ipsotros and uh, all those guys who, you know, annihilate every day for, I don't know, 20 Russian airplanes, five battalion tactical groups, uh, I don't know, you know, already invaded Russia and defeated Russians some way in, inside Russia. So, yeah, sure, uh, but uh, you can read the article by uh, Douglas McGregor and it's a great one. So, now, what I want to do now, obviously, is to kind of wrap up a little bit, not wrap up actually, uh, to make a uh, kind of uh, continuous introduction into the issue of how the um, uh, really attrition works. And people say, oh, please, you know, provide the whole lectures. You know what? I might. I might. I might come up with the course of uh, uh, simplified introduction in the uh, theory of operational research or operation theory and uh, basically uh, run uh, simplified mathematics. I'm already trying to simplify it as much as I can. So, but let's go back to this um, uh, uh, simple uh, issue of the simplest form of the uh, system of the differential equations uh, of Lanchester, OSIP of Lanchester, which as you already can see uh, here, you saw it before. And I want to tell you that when you look at the system, the solution itself, I will omit here how you just basically separate variables, they integrate both parts. It's really easy. I mean, really, really easy. It's a basic integration calculus. But the solution, as you can see yourself, is all about if you, for example, have uh, you know some number of people in force B and some number uh, of people in force A or blue and red, what have you. Uh, so uh, the issue is this: if, for example, if, for example, my force B has one thousand uh, uh, shooters or one thousand soldiers, and the force A, which uh, you know tries to uh, fight me back involves, uh, let's say, 750,000 uh, 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 troopers or shooters, and all those shooters in both uh, forces are of the same quality. They mean, that means what? They are either equally good or are either equally bad. So you will assume that, and correctly, that if in the kind of, you know, all things being equal, that if the force B begins to assault force A and they begin to, you know, fight each other in this firefight, that force B should win. I mean, it's kind of almost uh, intuitive that, yeah, it will win. And you know why? If you have 1,000 and 750 on the other side, so 1,000 minus 750, you'll get 250 uh, blue people left, you know, uh, after the annihilation of, of those 750 in the uh, force A or red force, what, uh, whatever. Well, it's wrong. This is not how it's going to work, even in the ideal scenario. Here's the solution. It's a classic uh, uh, quadratic equation solution from the, for the forces, you know, because we start with the forces at the start, B start and A start. And you already know what they are, do you? Yes, you know. So uh, at the B start, you can place your 1000 squared, isn't it? Minus, of course, B and force, we don't know how they will end, because we know they're just bigger, they should win, but intuitively, isn't it? So we'll leave it B squared or X squared, if you want. Then, of course, for the A, uh, A, A start squared, we put what? Our 750. And uh, we do not count for A and squared, because we know that by that time, the force, uh, A force will be annihilated and it will be zero. So basically what you have here is a very simple classic quadratic equation. And it will look like this, 1000, squ 1000 squared minus X squared or B and squared, if you wish, equals 750 squared. Well, guess what will be solution? 
and it will be, it will be telling you uh, how many people you will uh, have left in the force B when it fully annihilates force A. Guess what? It's going to be 661 shooters. The uh, 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 functioning here is non-linear, it's quadratic. For example, obviously, if you have 2,000 uh, let's say in force B and still 750,000 uh, 750 uh, in your force A guess what if you recalculate it again for your simplest quadratic equation the result will be that uh, by the time your force B annihilates the force A uh, it will have 100, uh, 1850 uh, people left just only 147 uh, 46 uh, shooters will be lost from the force B by the time the force A will be annihilated. Uh, it sounds counterintuitive, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, this is how the mathematics works, but of course, here's the question. And uh, people will ask immediately, oh my gosh, but what to do if uh, you have the uh, force A, let's say Russians, in well, obviously, uh, in Ukraine, and they are actually num numerically uh, inferior. How do you compensate for this? Because, yeah, we know, actually, the WSU is numerically superior, and even in the very many localities, in, uh, basically, uh, uh, when you separate those localities, not from the whole theater of operation, not from specific uh, direction, operational direction. No, let's put it this way. You put them, for example, in Lysychansk and uh, whatever the uh, access and Severodonetsk access right now. There are something like 15, 12,000 of them, Believe me, I can guarantee you that the force of LNR force and Russian force which attacks them is smaller. The question then is, how do you do that? Well, very simple. You improve the quality of your shooters. How do you improve the quality of your shooters? Because obviously combat effectiveness comes here into big, big play. Because obviously suddenly you can say, ah, okay, let's say if Russian shooter kills actually three, or five shooters of the numerically superior uh, force of, let's say, VSO. Guess what happens? Then, of course, you're not going to be getting this type of uh, interaction. You will be getting an interaction acting in an opposite direction. And then, if you will get to this... Uh, 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 brackets which are uh, a squared start and a squared end, if you uh, consider this to be the uh, Russian forces, and let's say uh, they count, let's say, 7,000, and UK forces on the B, they count 12,000. Intuitively, they should win, right? No. If you, of course, increase combat effectiveness of the forces of A, and then, of course, you add this little teeny weeny uh, multiplier, which we will call co uh, force multiplier near the bracket after the uh, before A start minus A uh, end. What is this force multiplier? Well, that's another thing. And uh, it is actually uh, quite a complex issue. We will be talking about this, and I will dedicate, obviously, special things about this, you know, special lecture almost, you know, on the force multipliers. You heard the term before, but what is force multiplier? Well, it is both morale, which, by the way, could be calculated uh, as a, a mathematical expectation. It is stochastic value. It's a random value. We don't know. Some platoon can fight like lions. The other platoon will be like slackers, and they don't want to take fire. You know, so who knows? But we will talk about it. And then, of course, it's what? Dominance in the area. Air in the area. Much better air defense, much better weapons, much better intelligence, recon, and what have you. And if you want to take a look how this will look on the much more complex, heterogeneous, and uh, uh, that means what different terrain, different uh, landscapes, so to speak, of things, different rivers, different hills, different everything, forests, you know, or steps, you know, prairies. So uh, here's the formula, for example, which is from RAND. Rand, of course, uh, a fake think tank. They basically uh, uh, do their mathematical justification of the bullshit for the Pentagon. But uh, hey, they do have people who actually can calculate their mathematics. Uh, they actually, this is an organization which lies professionally. Like most of the U.S. media, uh, you know, general experts, uh, they lie extremely sophomoric way and unprofessionally. These guys actually lie professionally. 
because I can do it this too, for example, if you need me to justify two uh, contradicting things which are mutually exclusive, I can do it. I can write uh, actually the thesis simultaneously about that VSU both loses and both wins. And I will use mathematics there and you'll say, oh my God, how this could be? But that's what Rand does. They actually write the bullshit, but uh, they do present actual viable mathematics. They present viable formulas. They present viable mathematical apparatus. So, and here's the, uh, here's the thing. Here's, for example, deriving aggregate expression for the general expression for the theater-wide uh, operations and attrition formula. And as you can see yourself, uh, yeah, it's just the start, obviously. Once you get G Deeper into this, you will begin to go on to, you know, really, really expanded expressions and why we'll be talking about it. But yes, we will be talking about force multipliers, literally multipliers, you literally multiply your force. And uh, so it's, um, as I already stated, if you want to take a look at uh, the most primitive uh, uh, application of the um, Lanchester Osipov attrition model, the simplest one. You can go and look up all those wonderful videos which are done by computer calculating those attrition rates. And they are called, they have all kinds of names like 100 uh, US Marine Corps uh, so, uh, um, uh, people against uh, 1000 uh, ancient Rom Romans or uh, 200 modern uh, whatever, uh, you know, soldiers or Green Berets against 10,000 what have you, you know, uh, old Persians, you know, ancient Persians. So look up those videos. They will show you actually what force multiplier is and how the attrition happens. So, and uh, that is what I wanted to talk about today. And, you know, uh, as always, I want to... Uh, you know, thank my wonderful patrons. And again, those who can afford, please support me on the Patreon. And, um, you know, just you know, uh, sign up, you know, um, and subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate your patience, guys. Uh, and I will be trying to do my uh, best to keep you informed and educated, if you wish, you know, on the matters which are happening right now in Ukraine. But also, and again, Ukraine is just one of the theaters. The war between West and Russia is much larger. It is massive in scale, and what I can tell you is the West is losing it badly. And um, if you uh, think that I'm making this up, look up Bloomberg, and Bloomberg is just basically a bunch of the pseudo-economic BS, you know. But even they, sometimes they have to kind of put some real economic news, and they say, oh yeah, and Russians also, Central Bank and Central Bank and Russian Economic Ministry, this, uh, 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 they already confirmed it today. Uh, Russian uh, profits from uh, selling its uh, everything, including gas and oil and all that, grew 50% in the first half of this year. It's, I know it's devastating news for all those, you know, uh, rara people from Kiev regime and, you know, from Washington DC, but that's true. And as Mario Draghi, the guy, Italian guy, prime minister, you know, he already admitted today, yeah, European countries already opened those ruble accounts with the Gaz Gazprom bank. So there you go. I mean, yeah. So it's all about, you know, smoke and mirrors pretty much for the West. And yeah, it doesn't matter what they do. Uh, if they don't want to open ruble, uh, ruble accounts in uh, Gazprom Bank, which obviously precludes United States and uh, UK and others, you know, to steal Russian uh, money, that's, that's piracy, plain and simple. Financial terrorism and piracy. So yeah, they will go without basically energy and well, too bad, you know. And, but other than that, opened, you know, account, which they did, you'll get your gas, or oil, or what have you. So, that's my talk for today, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you. Bye-bye.